Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. The lesson that I learned from my quest for the fastest massively parallel processing supercomputer was this. The success of a scientific discovery is not dependent on quote-unquote not guilty verdict from every notable scientist. The science fiction writings of creative writers are different from the factual writings of research scientists. As a research supercomputer scientist, I could not create the fastest computation and create it in the manner a creative writer creates her science fiction novel. I discovered, not created, the fastest computation. I experimentally discovered the fastest computation across my new internet. My new internet was my new computer as well as my new supercomputer. My new internet was a global network of 65,536 commodity off-the-shelf processors. It said that a science fiction novelist is born to tell tales. I said that the scientific discoverer is born to tell truths. Any scientific discovery must be reproducible in a laboratory. My experimental discovery was reproduced by polymaths at home with physics, calculus, and parallel processing supercomputing. My experimental discovery was and can be reproduced because it represented the truth. It's been said that art is what we, can't, we can get away with. I said that not discovering is what we can't get away with. For 16 years onward of June 20, 1974, my technological vision followed 16 mutually orthogonal dimensions in hyperspace. I followed 16 directions. That vision led me across 16 times, 2 to power 16, or 1,048,576 commodity of the shelf processors. Each processor communicated via email in 16 directions and communicated to send and receive initial and boundary conditions for my 65,536 initial boundary value problems and to share those intermediate answers with its 16 nearest neighboring processors. It's by indirection that we discover new directions for scientific progress. In the 1970s and 80s, it was anticipated that Moore's law will come to an end. That means that the anticipated speed increases of processors and computers will not continue to double every two years as predicted by Moore's law. With the anticipated end of Moore's law, I anticipated that 
doubling the number of computer cores will be the only way to double the speed up of the modern parallel processing supercomputer. In the mid-1970s, supercomputer pioneers such as Seymour Cray and Gene Amdahl ridiculed and mocked my parallel processing theory. I theorized that I could use the new internet that I visualized as a global network of 65,536 commodity processors and that I could use that new internet to solve computation-intensive grand challenge problems. The poster boy of the 20 grand challenge problems of supercomputing was the global circulation model that was used to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global warming. In the 1980s, no automation tools existed for automatic message passing across processors or computers. For that reason, I had to explicitly email each processor that I harnessed to experimentally discover the fastest computation. The supercomputer textbooks of the 1970s and 80s wrote that harnessing the massively parallel processing supercomputer to solve one of the 20 grand challenge problems of supercomputing is impossible. Before my experimental discovery that occurred on the 4th of July of 1989, it was impossible to synchronously email 65,536 commodity processors and command their emails them to compute together as one seamless cohesive supercomputer that is not a new computer per se, but that is a new internet de facto, and that solved a grand challenge problem in extreme scale computational physics. Since it was believed to be impossible to parallel process, manufacturers of vector processing supercomputers dismissed my parallel processing theory as a huge waste of everybody's time. I theorized that I could use massively parallel processing. I theorized that I could massively parallel process by programming a global network of 65,536 processors. I theorized that I could use those commodity processors to communicate and execute extreme scale petroleum reservoir simulators and to compute and communicate them faster and do so by a factor of 65,000 536 increases in the speeds of both email communication and arithmetical computations. It made the news headlines when I experimentally confirmed my theory and confirmed massively parallel processing on the 4th of July of 1989. That experimental discovery of the massively parallel processing supercomputer now helps petroleum geologists to discover and recover otherwise undiscoverable and unrecoverable oil and gas. That's one of the practical technologies as well as the rich and fertile consequences that came out of my invention of massively parallel processing. That experimental discovery of massively parallel processing is the reason one in 10 supercomputers are purchased by the petroleum industry.
insightful and brilliant lecture.